Well, good evening, good evening, my dear fiends. <laughs> Welcome to Monster Movie Night. I am Bobby Gell Monster, your horror host and guide to the macabre and the extreme scariness. <laughs> what you may ask, was I doing? Well, a few years back, quite a few years back, I took a correspondence class in uh, doll repair. <laughs> That's right, old Bobby Gum Monster is not only a horror host, mask maker, ventriloquist, puppeteer, he's also a doll technician. <laughs> That's right, I learned how to repair old dolls, antiques, moderns, all sorts. <laughs> and then I learned how to put a curse on them. <laughs> That's right. Uh, there's nothing like a cursed doll to uh, liven up the place, you know. <laughs> In fact, tonight's feature is called Kathy's Curse. Now, my dear fiends, this particular tidbit, uh, terror tale, is about a child, a young girl, that, well, finds an old doll in an attic. She's already displaying uh, signs of having powers, but this particular doll and house happens to be possessed, haunted, and cursed. <laughs> what a trio. Well, let us get going into it, shall we? Let me uh, pull up the old in haunted internet TV, but first I need to put it into the keyboard, right? Kathy's Curse. Around 1977, I believe it was. All right, so we've got it tuned in. So let's uh, tune in the haunted TV, the internet haunted TV, that is. Aha! I'll come and get you. Let me out! Let me out! <laughs> I've been watching you.
anyone's ever told me that someday I'd be working in this house again. But you know, Mrs. Gimble will at least get some rest here. Paul? Paul? Yeah? What time is it now? Half past. Half past two. Oh, they'll be here any minute now. Well, at least all the heavy work's done. Tell me, how old is the child? Oh, she'd be eight. Yeah, eight, I think. Isn't it a shame that they lost their newborn baby like that? Hello, oh, Mary. Hello. How wonderful to see you. Oh, my God. You were just a little boy. <laughs> and here you are. <laughs> yes. Here we are. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Paul. Hello. Thank you for arranging all this for me. Uh, Hello, madam. And welcome home. Thank you. God, everything's still here. Look, Vivian, the couch where Mother would curl up and read. And look there, her sewing basket, the bookcase. Father's armchair. And I wonder, I wonder. Yes, exactly in place. My first love. Well, here it is, darling. But I don't want you to feel as if you're in a museum. If you see anything you don't like, we'll change it. This is our house now. You know, I only lived here until I was four. My one real attachment was that figurine. Now, Mary will help you with the housework. This is a very big house, and you are supposed to be getting your strength back. And Paul? Well, Paul can do anything. I do the best I can, Mr. Gimble. For a man of my age. <laughs> oh, for a man of your age? Come on. I only hope I'm in your condition when I get to be your age. <laughs> Where did Kathy go? Kathy? Kathy? Where are you going? Up to my room, Daddy. Oh, let her go, George. Come on, let's unpack our things.
Did you see the way she acted when she came in? I mean, Kathy. How comfortable she seemed to be in her room. In the whole house, for that matter. And in a place she's never seen before. Well, maybe you'd like it better if she were upset. Well, would you? What are you talking about? Listen, George. This is getting pretty ridiculous. You know and I know that I've had a nervous breakdown, right? But it's not hereditary and it isn't catching. The way you go around analyzing everything Kathy says or does. It's too much, George. Darling, you don't understand. My feelings are just the opposite. I'm just delighted to see Kathy with so much confidence. And I'm thrilled because she seems to feel so at home here. That's all I meant. Maybe I express myself badly. I'm sorry if I've upset you. What are you doing? Nothing, Mommy. Nothing at all. Taking a nap? No, Mommy. With the bed. Vivian, this soup is boiling. What do you want me to do with it? Hold on, darling. Your women are coming to your rescue. watching me from the garden, George. Well, it must have been a dog or a cat. I can't see anything now. Do you really want me to go out there and take a look around? what you told me? Sure, we were just taking a walk. Now, is he just taking a walk? And why were you just taking a walk in my backyard? Hello. Uh, please forgive me, but my children... Are right here, madam. Looking for you. I'm so sorry. Please excuse them, but Walter brings them here every chance he gets, and he knows it's forbidden. <laughs> it doesn't matter at all. A large garden can be very tempting. <laughs> here, let me introduce my family. My wife, Vivian. How do you do? How do you do? Our daughter, Kathy. Hello. And I'm George, George Gimble. How do you do? We're just moving in. I'm Margaret Burton, your neighbor, and this is Geraldine, Walter, and Peter. Hi, Kathy. I can see you'll be having lots of fun with this merry crew. You'd like that, wouldn't you, Kathy? Yes. I've got an idea. Why don't you drop by tomorrow afternoon? We can get acquainted, and the children, too. Splendid. Thank you very much. Come, children, move. Bye. 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 Mm -hmm. 
I'm tired. Ah, uh, Mummy's little helper's tired, eh? Why don't you go upstairs and lie down there, Kathy? Why don't you want to see anymore? answered me, you know. What's that filthy rag? Look at those hands. Go wash them before the Burton children get here. And get rid of that disgusting thing. I have to oil this. Otherwise, someone might get locked in there. Hmm, dusting, you know. It uh, reminds me of an old poem that I, that I heard years and ages ago. Let's see how it goes. You are dust, and you will turn to dust. That's why I do not dust. It might be someone I know. <laughs> Uh, 
this place needs about another bucket of dust, I believe. <laughs> and some more cobwebs, too. I'm so pleased to see Kathy will have some new friends to play with. Your home is perfectly charming. I should warn you, Agatha has an absolute passion for anything having to do with the past. You know, Vivian, if you listen to Margaret long enough, she'll convince you that I'm not exactly normal. Oh, you know I'd never say anything like that. But Agatha is the only person I know who can make inanimate objects talk. Make inanimate objects talk? What do you mean? It's actually quite simple. Every object, animate or inanimate, has its own story. Its own history, in fact. Now, when a medium is present... Agatha is a medium. Yes, it's true. That's why I'm so attracted to all things. They have experienced so much. They tell me so much. Take, for example, that photograph over there. It's a picture of my husband's father. I never met him, but this was his house. Are we going to look for mommy? Are we going to look for mommy? Don't talk to me about your mommy. All women are bitches, repeat. All women are bitches. Watch out, Daddy. There's a rabbit. No, Daddy, no. He's gone, Daddy. I'm all alone. No, he isn't in his room. Shut up. Do you hear me? Your mother's gone. <laughs> hurt, don't they? Well, it's perfectly natural. You've been burnt in a fire. Just wait a minute, and I'll make it stop hurting. I usually have a much harder time getting through. But that photo... Well, never mind. I must be going now. It's been very nice meeting you, Vivian. I hope I shall see you again sometime soon. Goodbye. Well, it's been quite an experience, to say the least, Agatha. Do drop by again the next time you're in the neighborhood. Bye-bye for now. Are you going to tell me what went on here?
now, sneaker. What's the matter, eh? Easy. Easy now, just calm down. You don't feel quite at home yet, eh? Never mind, you will soon. It's only the dog. Shut up! You stupid bitch! See that Paul recommended that mutt. Told me she was the pick of the dead. Um, be careful not to disturb Kathy this morning. She slept very poorly last night, okay? Very good, ma'am. Let her sleep as long as she wants. Very good.
Breakfast is ready. It's nothing. Don't worry about it, child. There, it's all done. I'll fix you another bowl. No, I just made one myself. Oh. Didn't my mommy tell you that I hate being kissed? Hello, sweetheart. Look who the wind blew in. Feeling better this morning, little girl? <laughs> well, my dear little fiend Jerry, you know, curses are most interesting, especially when you have a nice book about curses from uh, the Encyclopedia of Man, Myth, and Magic. Uh, it would seem that it says that curses have been as far back as thought to be as well when it first all started with Adam and Eve and that particular uh, serpent of uh, <laughs> that, you know, tempted Eve and with the apple and then uh, Eve ad tempted Adam and it just kept going, don't you know? Oh, yes, I know. I heard about that. It's an interesting thing, but I'm not sure all the uh, details. Well, I'm sure that there's a lot of people that could tell you all about the details. You know, there's a lot of other curses as well. You know, the curse of uh, King Tut's tomb. Oh, really? Yes. And then, of course, there's little curses, you know, like objects, like dolls, as we've talked about tonight. Dolls, you say? That's right, dolls. You mean like uh, ventriloquist dolls? <laughs> yes, sometimes like ventriloquist dolls or figures, as the ventriloquists like to say. Oh yeah, we don't want to say the other other thing, right? No, we don't want to say the other thing, dummies. What? N just, just be careful. Be calm. Be calm. Uh, anyway, hope you enjoy. You're enjoying the film tonight, eh, dear fiends? Cassie's curse. <laughs> well, maybe we should have called it. Cassie's cursing. <laughs> 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 
Oh my gracious, all the B words that's got bandied around. Oh dear, dear me. <laughs> I, I'm so sorry about that. You know, uh, a lot of the views that's in this film, especially about uh, females, do not uh, are not shared by Monster Movie Nights or any affiliates or anybody that, well, that's attached to it. Not myself, not Boris, uh, not even Jerry, my dear fiend here. That's right. I don't like to say that word. Good. Good for you, young man. Good for you. you be, sit right. Oops, come back up. Your head's coming off and you're falling off my knee. You know, that's a, that's a, a precarious uh, situation there. <laughs> yes, it is. Anyway, let us get back to tonight's feature, Cassie's Curse, not Cassie's Cursing, <laughs> and see what else they can uh, drudge up <laughs> in that wonderfully haunted house. <laughs> Let's go back to it now. Okay, Mr. Gimbal, let's go over this again. When were you first notified? At about 11.15. And who told you about it? I told you already. My daughter called me on the construction site and said, Mommy wants you to come home right away. Can you give me an idea of how she sounded? Lieutenant? Until I got to the back of the house that I realized where the screaming was coming from. And I looked up at the window. I saw her fall. The dog was howling and howling. There at the window, the damn window. My poor baby. I saw her there. My baby! Hi, girl. Hey, they tell me you're always barking, huh? For no reason, is that so, huh? Hey, nice girl, huh? Nice girl. Hey, Mr. Gimble, I'm sorry. Uh, I just wanted to see you come over here. That's okay, thanks. You, you go back. <laughs> Well, Mr. Kimball, I'll be leaving now. We've got to wait for the results of the autopsy. Uh, by the way, do you planning on leaving town within the next few days? No. I'll be here. Oh, that's good. In case I have anything to report, I'll know where to find you. Goodbye now. Be very careful not to disturb mummy. Don't be upset, Kathy. Soon everything will be all right again. Mummy will be all better. Yes, darling, you'll see. Put some milk in the omelet. 
Oh, really? Why? To make it lighter, of course. Very well, madam. Your wish is my command. That's enough now, Fatty. Let me see now. Where would the frying pan be? In the cupboard right in front of you. I think that is called woman's intuition. <laughs> now, I suppose you can also tell me where I can find the parsley. Thank you, Vivian. Okay. I'm going to bring the tray up to money. Isn't it a bit heavy for you? No, I think I can manage. I, I swear to you, I saw her there. She was afraid. I don't know what's happening anymore. I recognize her. I don't know her. Hey, please, please try and calm yourself. There now. Close your eyes. Kathy, you should go to bed. You must be tired. Hello, Dr. Clark. Please, can you tell him it's urgent? It's about Mrs. Gimbel. Kathy, you haven't kissed your mother goodnight. Uh, yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. My wife's just had another attack. She's very upset. Yes. My little girl is getting too heavy to carry. <laughs> Try not to disturb Mummy. She's feeling much better this morning. And the doctor will be here in about half an hour. Off you go now. <laughs> I've got to leave. I'll be back around lunchtime. What's the matter, cat got your tongue, hmm? Cat 
happy, you could at least answer me. I get it. I bet your father told you not to talk to me because he wanted me to rest, right? But I'm feeling much better now. It was the ac accident that upset me so. Poor Mary. Kathy? Kathy, tell me something. Were you in your room when Mary was in there cleaning? Answer me, Kathy. Were you in there when... Kathy, you're starting to make me angry. I saw you. Do you hear me? I saw you there when Mary... It's no use trying to hide. I saw you there with my own two eyes. Do you understand? so useless. Try not to work. In two or three days, you have a better perspective on the situation. Things won't look nearly so weak. Thank you. Goodbye. It's going to be two or three days before we have Mummy back with us. My work is very time-consuming at the moment, and I won't be able to look after you the way I'd like to. So I'm going to have to ask Cousin Lydia if you can spend a few days at her house. Daddy, I want to stay with you. I won't be any trouble. I'll take care of everything. I'll even make your breakfast, but Daddy, please don't send me away. Kathy, darling, don't cry. It's going to be hard for me, too. Maybe there is another solution. If Paul agrees to come over and you promise to act like a big girl, how about that? Daddy, you'll see. I'll make you proud of me. <laughs> Here, you give it to her. No, you give it to her, Kathy. No, I don't like dogs. You don't like dogs? Well, no, it's not. Sneak her. Sneak her. Come on. Come on, Kathy. See, she's a lovely dog. She's a female. So what? Females are gentler than males. Isn't that right, Sneak her? She's a good dog. <coughs> Come on. Go ahead and pet her. She won't hurt you. I, I don't promise want you that. To. Go ahead. Sneak her. She doesn't like me either. If that don't beat all. Paul, do you know when Daddy's coming home? He said it'd be pretty late tonight. He'll be visiting your mom when he comes from the office.
home? Mrs. Gimble. Hello, Kathy. You know her? No. Of course you do, Kathy. I was here last week with Mrs. Burton. No! Well, I think we've had enough of you. The little lady doesn't seem to like you, that's for sure. And what the little lady doesn't like, I don't like either. How dare you! You can't speak to me like that! <laughs> Good Lord, the old cow's dead! Get out! Take off! Get up here! Oh, bitch! <laughs> oh, 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 bitch! Fat whore! <laughs> Fat whore! <laughs> Fat dried up whore! <laughs> Fat dried up old whore! <laughs> I want to see Mrs. Gimble. She's where she belongs. In the nut house. Why don't you join her over there? <laughs> yeah. Why don't you join her over there? <laughs> can't you run faster than that, you old cat? God, the old bitch. You saw that, Kathy? 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 Here's mud in your eye, Kathy.
Don't you like it, good old Paul? Snakes, spiders, and rats. Oh, my. I've never seen anything like this. If you have no objections, I'd like to do an autopsy on her. Oh, that bastard. If I ever put my hands on him. Poor sneaker. My poor old dog. Do you think uh, she may have been poisoned? She was my handyman's dog. Uh, he is convinced there's been some kind of foul play. Well, I've never seen any type of poison that can produce these kinds of lesions. Never. You're not being a good girl, Kathy. You haven't touched your breakfast. Your father would be so annoyed. Come on now. Try and eat something. Would you like a bit more salad, madame? There. The salad is delicious, isn't it? Well, now, are all your children in school this year? Studying hard? Are they? Well, now, my daughter's a gem. What a that filthy rag you got there. Where on earth did you find that? Get it to me. Get it to me. I want to burn it. I want to put it in the incinerator now. Give it to me, Kathy! Oh, Kathy! Give it to me, Kathy! Give it to me, Kathy! Give it to me, Kathy! Give me the filthy thing! Give it to me, Kathy! Give it to me! Give it to me, Kathy! Give it to me, Kathy! Take it! Agatha Courtney. I'm sure you remember me. I was at your house the other day with Margaret Burton. I was the medium. Remember? <laughs> I hope I didn't upset you the other day. Oh, that's very kind of you to say so. But the reason that I'm calling, well, 
It's a little delicate to talk about over the telephone. Oh, good. Then I'll jump in a taxi and I'll be over in a few minutes. I can assure you it's very important. Goodbye. I'm here. It's perfectly clear to me that you're here, Agatha. Where is your mother? I thought I already told you. She's in the nut house. You know. The loony bin. The mad house. the great medium herself. <laughs> medium? I'd say extra rare piece of shit! <laughs> Go on, you filthy female cow. Make us laugh. <laughs> I beg of you, leave this house and never come back. this afternoon. Do you want to go now? Yes.
Wait, I think I know where she is. Paul had a slight accident this morning. She's probably at his house. She must have forgotten the time. I'll go and get her, sweetheart. I'll be back in five minutes. Don't catch cold. Darling. Everything slammed in my face, like a sign telling me I wasn't wanted here. Kathy, Kathy, darling. George, we've got to help her. She's in danger here, I know it. Kathy! Where were you? I was playing in the attic. Again. George, please believe me. She needs our help. She's sleeping now, Doctor. No, no, she's very calm. Yes, I know I was a little shaky before, but. Okay, I'll call you back tomorrow and uh, let you know how she's doing. George? Yes, darling? I'm not getting any better, am I? No, oh, don't worry, darling. The doctor says it's nothing. It often happens to people when they get very tired. Those tranquilizers really knocked you out. She's sound asleep. I don't remember kissing her goodnight. That's understandable. You fainted. Come on now, you go to sleep. What's the matter? Uh, 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 uh. Uh. 
blood. <laughs> One of them had tipped over. <laughs> there are six of them in here. <laughs> it was my father. He used it as a kind of tonic, a sort of fortifier, I think. He was always afraid, afraid he'd run out. <laughs> Well, that's sensible. You should always keep an extra few bottles of blood in your closet. <laughs> I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it, George. She did it on purpose. The look on her face, the look. That's enough now, do you hear? Stop it now. Jesus Christ. Will you look at her? Just look at her. Don't forget to take your car to the garage for 10 o'clock. It's this house, George. I don't know how to explain it. But 
something's wrong. George? Since we've been here, Kathy Hardy doesn't talk anymore. How do you explain that? And me? Why am I constantly upset and nervous? And even you, George, you seem to be pulling away from me and avoiding me. Listen to me, Vivian. I have been working at the construction site for 18 hours a day, and I am exhausted. You know how important this project is to me. I just can't stand any more of your hysterics. As for this house, it has four walls and a roof, like any other house. And as for Kathy, she talks to me. Vivian, when are you going to understand that you are imagining all this? Creating your own hell and making all our lives unbearable. You're screaming your irrational fears. And you blame me. Even Kathy. Our baby. But I won't let you go that far again. You hear me? I just won't allow it. Tell me, Paul, can you look after Vivian and Kathy for the rest of the day? I don't know how to organize things around here. We're having some problems with the building, and I have to meet with some members of the board who are coming in from the coast. I don't know when I'll get back. Of course, Mr. Gimble. I'll stay. You don't have to worry about a thing. You can count on me. Not a drop. Okay, Paul, okay. And thank you. I'll go and see her five minutes in her room. Why are you staring at me that way? I'll go up and see how your mother is. You don't have to. What? 
Mummy's asleep. Don't bother going up to her room. I'll go. We never know. I know. You want to go up because you're an old man. So what? Old people like to see others die. Come on now, what are you telling me? Your mother won't die. Well, I'll be late. I don't think I'll be back before 1, 1 30. Can you wait for me? How's my wife feeling? Mm. She's sound asleep since you left. Okay. Thank you. See you later. my daughter, Kathy. 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 Don't look at me like that. What have you done to my daughter? Give me that filthy rag. Kathy. Give it to me right away. Oh, I have to burn it. Get out of here. Get out. Don't worry, Mrs. Gimble. It's me. Go away. Oh. Try and relax. I beg of you, leave my daughter alone. Don't hurt her anymore. Have pity on her, please. Give me that filthy rag, Kathy. Give it to me. Where did you find this rag? No, Kathy. It's not a doll anymore. What doll are you talking about, Mrs. Gimble? Burn it. It must be burned. I beg of you, save her.
to go. I'll call you later. My name is Laura.
Hmm, Boris, this is an interesting 1800s doll. <laughs> Isn't it a creepy little thing, my dear fiends? <laughs> you know, I, I just love these little creatures from uh, yesteryear, and th they have such wonderful features, you know, and, and they're so pale and death-like. <laughs> Uh, what a film! What a film! Uh, you know, it just goes to show uh, kids shouldn't be taken for granted like that. You know, they they should be encouraged with their powers and 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 maybe you know. Uh, watch after a little bit better, you know, when they start picking up strange dolls in, in uh, old houses and attics, maybe you should find out exactly where that doll came from. <laughs> right, Boris? Anyway, what a wonderful film. You know, I think tonight, I know we usually go by the three little duckies that I have had here, the vampire, the Dracula, and the uh, zombie, but tonight was such a big a uh, big, big film of horrors and scares and thrills and chills. I think, especially with you know, the demonic type thing, I think I will give them a great big demonic ducky. That's right. Let's, let's give them that. Okay. Wow. Oops. <laughs> I think we rang the bell with that one, Boris. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, oh my. Anyway, so glad that you could come out tonight. So glad that you're with us to watch these wonderfully horror, not horrible, but horror wrenched and th uh, thrill packed adventures and uh, terror tales. Hmm? <laughs> right, Boris? Right. Anyway. Until next time, as always, keep screaming.